So for the shell, I'm going to start out with um, tattered rose. So I'm going to grab a little bit of tattered rose, and I'm going to lay it down. I want it to be darkest underneath where her hand is and shinier up here at the top. So I'm going to lay my ink down right here at the bottom. And right in here where it's going to be shadowed where it's um, inside the shell. And then wipe my brush off, and then just use the ink I laid down and the water in my brush to start brushing it up. And I've got quite a bit on my brush now. I've picked up since I was brushing that, so I'm going to wipe that off. And then I'm just going to come back with my water and again flick it up towards the top. So it's darker down here at the bottom, but just a little bit pink up here at the top. And then I'm going to go down here and do the two shells I have down here. So I'm going to pick up a little bit more of my tattered rose. And for this one, I want it to be dark right here in the center the most. So I'm going to add a little bit in there, and then I'm just going to use my water to spread that out lightly towards the edges. So it kind of leaves a little dark area where those little dots are a little bit. And then for this one, I want these little stripes to be the darkest. So I'm going to go ahead and add some ink on those, and then just use a little bit of water and my brush to fan that ink out onto the rest of the shell. like that, and then we'll let those dry. And let's go up here and add a little bit more color to our little, our shell up here. So for our um, shadowing on our shell, I've mixed um, a little bit of my tattered rose, and then I've grabbed a little bit of pumice stone this time to add shadows, and I've mixed those on my little sheet. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of that mixed color and again, I'm going to lay it down where I want it to be darkest, so I'm going to start down here at the bottom. And already I can tell that I didn't put enough color in there because I can't see it. So I'm going to grab a little bit more pumice stone and add it to my little mix over here. Maybe grab a little bit more tea dye. And then come in, let's see what we got now. Well, that's a little bit darker. I don't want it to be too dark, but I want to add a little bit of color on there. So it looks like it's getting a shadow and dropping down towards the bottom. Okay, so let's go add a little bit more shadows down here to these little shells down here. So I'm grabbing a little bit of my mixed tattered rose and pumice stone color. And again, I want this shell to be darkest in the middle, so I'm going to add a little bit of that right here in the middle. And then I'm going to lightly brush it down each of these little legs. Same for this one, I want it to be darkest right along the edge and these little lines I want to be darker. So I'm just going to put a little ink on there and then I'm just going to work that ink further out onto the shell and color it in a little bit more. Now let's darken up this shell inside. And then again on the bottom I want it to be a little bit darker. So we're just going to add a little bit color along the bottom and then you wipe your brush off so you just have water and then very lightly I'm going to go from the top down and kind of lightly brush that little line just soften it just a little bit maybe go up here a little bit farther and soften these these two first ones are a little bit um, wider so we'll just add a little bit more on there Okay, so that's a shell. That looks pretty good. And I'm liking how these two down here turned out. So let's go and add a little bit of color to um, her eyes. And for her eyes, I'm actually going to use um, a couple of distress markers. So I've got a walnut stain marker because that's the color we colored her, her eyes. And then I've got a black soot marker to add the pupil. So I'm going to start with my walnut stain. And I want to darken it up just a little bit up here on the edges. So I'm going to add a little bit of color with my with my marker, and then I'm going to use my water brush to just lightly tap the edge to soften it just a little bit. And same for this side, I'm just going to go in and add a little bit up here at the top, 
Maybe kind of bring it down on a little point there a little bit. And then use your water brush to lightly tap it just to soften the edge a little. But it'll still be, um, it helps it stay in one place and not go everywhere else. Okay, so while that is drying, we're going to let that dry. I'm going to go down here and let's add some um, sand to for her to sit on. So for her sand, I'm going to use um, scattered straw, the same color we used for her hair up here to start. So I'm going to give my brush a squeeze to get it wet because I want it to be really damp. So now when I touch my hand, it feels way wetter than it does normally when I paint because I want the ink to really run across the paper. So I went ahead and I'm going to get me a little bit more of my um, scattered straw. And so I want the sand, I don't want it to just stop right here at the edge of her of her knee. She's gonna, I want it to look like it goes back a little way. So I'm going to start up here, like right about there. I'm going to, same thing, I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to pretend that I go across like this and I'm just going to bring it out this side. And then I'm going to wipe it. Let me fix that mess I made right here. Accidentally colored her leg. So I'm going to use that ink and my very wet brush and I'm just going to brush that down and around the shells. And you can go out to the edge of the paper if you want to. Um, you can, you know, just decide how far you want your sand to go. If you want to color the whole area in, that's fine too. And now I'm just, I have water on my brush, so I'm just going to lightly, because I want my ink to go down more, I'm just going to lightly get the paper a little bit damp and then I'm going to grab a little bit of ink on my brush and I'm going to go in and my, because it's wet now, the ink kind of runs around a little bit on the paper while you're brushing it on. It makes it a little bit easier to, to spread it when you're doing um, a big area to get the paper a little bit damp first. So same thing on this side. And you're going to go back, you'll let that dry after your first coat, and you can go back and add more um, if you want it to be darker after that dries. So while that's drying, let's go up here and let's add some, um, some sky. So same thing, I've gotten my brush is still really wet, but I'm going to grab just a little bit of my tumbled glass on my, on my brush. Whoops. And I'm going to, I'm going to avoid getting right down here where this line is because it's still wet. So I'm going to start right up here by her hand and just run a little bit down the edge of her arm. And then if you have a lot on your brush, wipe that away. And then come in with just the water you have and spread it away from her body. And you just continue all the way around doing that. And I'm not going to go all the way down her leg because remember it's wet, so I want to let that dry just a little bit more. So I'm going to go back up here to the top and I'm going to work my way around to the other side and then I'll come back and add a little bit more um, next to that sand area. Just work your way around, adding more blue, and you can spread it out as far as you want. And if you don't think your brush is wet enough, or you don't think it's wiping the ink out like you want it to, um, give it a little squeeze. You want it to be pretty wet when you use try to fill up a large area. Um, it makes it easier for the ink to flow across the paper. Go back to this side and add a little bit down here now that my sand is dried. Down further down on our leg here. 
You could also do, um, if you didn't want to paint it in there, the sky, you could do, um, get a sponge dauber and put your paint on your sponge dauber or, you know, on your ink pad and just scrub it on there like you would if you were distressing it. So just like that. I don't know if you can see it quite as well. I might let that dry just a little bit and then come back. So I'm going to go grab some more scattered straw because I want to darken up her where she's sitting down here because she's going to cast a little bit of a shadow where she would sit. So I'm going to go in and add a little bit more of the scattered saw right around her body there so it looks like she's sitting and it's making it the sand darker underneath. Okay, well I'm liking that. And I don't know if you can see the shadow of the sky up here, but it looks really good. You can also go back in and darken it back up with the second layer if you wanted to do that. But I think mine is looking fabulous, so I'm just going to leave it. So let's go do her eyes um, now. Okay, so this stamp, when you stamp it, she does not have a pupil in her eye. So I'm going to put one on because I think it looks silly with my um, black soot distress marker. So I'm just going to say, hmm, her eye maybe on this side goes like this. And then I'm just going to fill it in. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to say, oh, I'm, but I'm not going to go all the way to the outside of the, of the, the walnut stand I laid down. I'm going to leave a little bit of space and I'm just going to fill that in. And you could do it with just um, your black soot and your marker or your water brush, but it is really hard to get that on there like that. Black soot, once you get it wet, it just tends to dilute and spread out. So I'm just going to cheat and use my marker to do that. Like that and then let that dry and then I go in with a, my Sharpie white paint pen and we'll add a pupil here in just a second. Alright, so now we've got her all colored so let's go ahead and um, color her bikini while we're waiting for um, her eye to dry. So I've got a piece of my nonstick craft mat here and I've got my pink Wink of Stella glitter pen and I'm just going to take my glitter pen and I'm going to color it onto my craft mat like so. And then I'm going to pick a little bit up on my um, my paintbrush, and we're going to color her bikini. So I'm going to take my I've got a little bit of my um, glitter pen right here on my paintbrush, and I'm just going to get a little bit under her bikini. I'm going to pick up a little bit more. Go down here and do the bottoms. a little bit right here and that gave me a nice light um, coat to start with you can also to make it darker you can go in with just the pen but you want to be quick so I'm going to draw a line right next to her body and then I'm going to take my bink, my water brush and I'm just going to lightly feather that line away from her body out here onto the rest of her bikini that'll make your ink your pink a lot darker than if you use it off the craft mat. And I'm going to do the same thing down here on the bottom of her bikinis. So I'm going to run a line right along her leg. Whoops, I colored her leg. Like that. And then I'm just going to use my brush to feather that line out here onto her bikini. Like I said, once you lay the ink down on your, on your paper, it starts to dry. So you want to be quick. If you don't think you'll be quick enough, only do half of the bikini, like up here to this little line where it gets really skinny, and then do the next half. Otherwise, you'll have a line sitting there, and it won't it won't spread out. So you'll do that until you get it as dark as you want, and then um, you can't see it on here, but it adds glitter too to the coloring once you have it on there. So I think I'm gonna darken her bottoms up just a little bit more. So I'm gonna go right along this line again. And then just brush it up like that. Make them a nice pink sparkly color. I'm going to do this side. We 
we wanted to have a pink bikini. I was thinking about coloring it yellow, but um, since her hair was blonde, I decided we better go with something a little bit brighter. So that's how you use your Wink of Stellar glitter pen. Um, if you don't have the Wink of Stellar glitter pen, you could also use um, Worn Lipstick. That's a really pretty pink color you could use to um, paint her bikini or um, any other color you picked would be great. Okay, so we're going to go up here now. Her eyes have dried, so I've got my Sharpie white paint pen. And I'm going to shake it before I use it, and I always shake it with the lid on. Because it never fails that if I shake it without the lid, it sprays out the end and I get it on my project. <laughs> and it doesn't come off. So I'm just going to take my paint pen and I want to add a pupil, so I'm going to go up here and I'm just going to go like that and give her a little dot. I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. And you may have to do it, my paint pen looks like it's a little dry, so I'm going to do it a couple more times. But that'll give her a dot in her eye, a little sparkly spot. So it looks like she actually has a little eyeball on there instead of just no eyes at all. Okay, so that is our girl. We have colored her. You could go in and add more shadows if you wanted. Um, just look at your project and see how much ink you added and whether or not you think it needs to be darkened up or not. That's totally up to you. Um, I don't usually add too much ink to my project, so I don't have to go back a bunch of times. But some people put a lot of ink on the first time, so they don't need to go back at all. So you just have to be aware of what it looks like and how you want it to look. So also our little card this month um, comes with the sentiment. So I'm going to show you how to stamp this cute little, because I cut out the circle for you. So you're going to get your little, I have my stamp a majig Let me move some of my junk here. Oh, and before I forget, there's also some of these, some shells down here. I use my walnut stain and a sponge dauber to darken up the edges and kind of the swirls because they're embossed. So it would make them stand out a little bit more. Okay, so I've gotten my stamp on my jig. I've got my little piece that came in the kit. And I've got my stamp on my jig. So if you've never used a stamp on my jig before, you're going to take it and it's got a little T right here. So the piece of plastic fits right up into the T, right against it, like that. And then you take your, um, I'm going to use VersaFine Onyx Black Ink. This is my sentiment stamping ink of preference. Um, I don't know what it is, but it just seems to, to stamp the image darker and crisper than if I used Memento ink. So I'm going to stamp up my stamp. And then I'm just, just like I did with a piece of plastic, I'm going to sit it into the corner of that T. And I'm going to run it straight down onto the plastic and stamp it. And so now I have my image on my piece of plastic right here. All right, so I've got my piece stamped on my stamp -a jig and I'm gonna get my nonstick craft mat back. I forgot about that. And then I'm going to take my little circle I got in my kit and I'm gonna put some repositionable tape on the back and then I'm just going to stick it to my craft mat like this. And then I'm gonna take my circle my nonstick craft mat, and I'm going to set it on top of my circle until you know, I get it where I think it should be. Because, of course, it's not a perfect circle. So I'm going to stick it on there where I think it should be, and then I'm going to re put my little Stampin' Bajig T part onto the plastic so it's up against the corner. And then I'm going to re ink up my stamp. And I'm going to pick up the piece of plastic and move it to the side. And then holding the T-square, I'm going to run the stamp down the edge onto the little circle. Give it a little push. Whoops. Don't do that. That makes a mess. And then pick it up, and then you've got your little stamped image perfect on your circle. And I usually let it dry for a second, and then um, pick it off, and then I turn it over and I rub the, this adhesive off, and then stick it where I want it to go. So I'll put that right there. But CC Designs also puts out, um, that was their cutter I used, was this little cutter. They, they come out with this little plastic thing that you can use to cut it out. So if you wanted to cut out your own at home, I've already stamped um, the little circle here onto a piece of scratch paper. And you just take this little template 
and you stick it on here and you decide you know where you want your circle to be so I think it needs to be more You gotta kind of turn it until you. There's actually on the little template. There's a little line that on there that shows you where it's gonna cut. So I'm gonna turn it until it's inside the little line. And you take it, and after you've got it where you want it to go, it's got these great little um, circles right here on the template. I take my pencil and I just color in the little circle like that, and then I take this off. And you've got your little circles already stamped right there. And then you take your little template, your, your cutter, and you line up those little circles inside these little little circles that they attach to the die right here. And then I put a little piece of tape on here and then run it through my die cutting machine. And it cuts out that little circle perfectly. But it comes with the little um, piece of plastic template. So that is our card this month, Seashell Sarah. And you can find all the supplies for this over at heathershobbyhaven.com. Um, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.